So the next diet I'm going to talk about is the low FODMAP diet. And so this has gained a lot of popularity uh, recently in its use for IBS, which I know all of you are familiar with irritable bowel syndrome and how it differs from IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. Um, so FODMAP is actually an acronym, and I'll apologize ahead of time to the translator because it's a complicated word in English, so I'm sure it's not much easier in French, but it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides, and polyols. But essentially what FODMAPs are, are poorly absorbed molecules in the small intestine, which become rapidly fermented by bacteria. And they feel that this process can lead to abdominal pain, bloating, flatulence, and diarrhea. So a meta-analysis, which is essentially a collection of studies, showed that adherence to the low FODMAP diet uh, compared to those following a Western diet, it did result in the improvement of symptoms related to IBS and IBD, in addition to a significant reduction in symptom severity, as well as improvement in quality of life scores. So we feel that IBD patients may be treated for their IBS-like symptoms by following a low FODMAP approach, but right now little is known concerning how this diet might actually impact the underlying inflammation. It's also really important to note that the low FODMAP diet is only meant to be a short-term diet typically followed for about six to eight weeks, where you um, eat only low FODMAP foods and avoid the high FODMAP foods. And then after that period, you're supposed to reintroduce foods based on specific FODMAP groups that they belong to. And the hope is that we identify certain groupings of foods that might cause more symptoms over another so that you don't have to follow this restrictive diet uh, moving forward for the long term. That's where connecting with a dietitian might be really helpful because they could absolutely provide you some advice on, again, how to reintroduce these foods properly, just to make sure that we have our best look at maybe identifying certain FODMAP triggers if that was something you're interested in exploring.